What's going on everyone? So in front of me, I have my Samsung Galaxy S21 Ultra and hopefully you have your new Samsung Galaxy device in front of you as well because today is the official launch day of the S21 lineup. So I thought it'd be kind of nice to do a tips and tricks video, especially for those of you that are moving maybe from iPhone or you might just be new to the Samsung world. But ultimately, we're gonna jump into a few things that you may or may not know that you can do with your Samsung Galaxy device. But with that said, let's get into these tips and tricks. So the first thing you may want to do is change what your side key is used for as by default it's going to pull up Bixby. But if you want to change that the first thing you're going to do is head into your settings and we're going to search for side key. I like to you know search for what I'm looking for because I just feel it's easier to find that way. So then we're going to tap on the option here within the menu and then we're going to tap on side key. Now you do have a couple of options here so you can change what happens if you double press the button which by default it'll quickly launch your camera app. But the one we want to focus on is what happens when you press and hold your side key. So we're going to change that to power off menu. So now when you press and hold that button, you get your power off menu. But if you do want to keep your side key as Bigsby, the way you would then turn your device off is to slide down into your notification panel. And we're going to tap this power button right here and then that will pull up your power off menu. Before we go any further y'all, if you happen to be new to the channel, I go by Tech Me Out. Welcome. Up here I like to talk about everything in relation to technology. So if that is something that you are interested in as well, feel free to hit that subscribe button and the like button if you feel inclined to. Now jumping into the next tip, and that's how to disable Samsung Pay from your lock screen. I know for me personally, I was always activating Samsung Pay by accident, so yeah, this one came in clutch. <laughs> so the first thing you're going to do is head into the Samsung Pay app. And then once you're in here, we're going to tap on these three lines in the top left and we're going to go down to your settings and we're going to go to quick access. And this is where you can toggle on and off the different ways that you want to access Samsung Pay. So in my case, I turned them all off because if I'm going to use it, I just rather go to the application, but you can manually configure it here. Now, one thing I really love about this phone is the fact that when I'm in YouTube and I navigate away from it, I'm still able to see the YouTube video that I'm watching. But if I wanted to make this window a little bit bigger, I can do so by going to the edge of it and then dragging it open like that. Now you can only resize it between those two options, but still it's nice to have. Now moving right along, another feature that's really clutch to me is the ability to access my widget options by just simply long pressing on an application and choosing widgets. So you no longer have to press on your home screen and then navigate to widgets and then try to find it within the menu there. You now have an even quicker and to me a much more fluid and efficient way to go about doing so. And on top of that, not only can you access it from your lock screen, but you can access your widget options as well from within your app drawer. All right, for our next one, you can quickly lock your screen and wake your screen by just simply double tapping on your home screen and then double tapping again to wake it up. Now, something to note about this is that it doesn't work with a custom launcher. So if you have that installed, that little double tap action, unless it's a feature within that launcher you're using, is not gonna work. Now, if you wanna spice things up a little bit on your call screen, you now have the option to do that with One UI 3. So you can actually have a video playing as your background when someone calls you. In order to access that, you're gonna head into your phone app, and then you're gonna tap on these three dots up here in the top left, and we're gonna choose settings, and we're gonna go down to call background. So you got a few options in here, so you can customize your layout in reference to how your contact and their phone number appears. But the one that we wanna focus on is this background option here in the bottom right, and that's gonna let you choose either a pre-made video, or you can head into your gallery and choose one of your own personal videos. And getting it. <laughs> And if you want, it can be a photo or video. <laughs> I don't think that meme's ever gonna get old. Now, another cool feature you have with this is Facebook-like messenger bubbles. So this is gonna let you take apps in which you're using and have them as a floating bubble on your home screen, similar to what you would have for like Facebook Messenger. Now, for those that wanna turn this option on, you're gonna head into your settings and we're gonna search for advanced settings. And it should pull you up into your notification menu and we're just gonna choose advanced settings from within here. And we're gonna turn on floating notifications. And this is where you can configure if you're gonna get a bubble notification or a smart pop-up view. So I'm gonna to go to smart pop-up view. That way it appears as a bubble notification. So I now have that notification here and I can still keep doing what I need to and then just tap on it when I'm ready to interact. And it just stays there so that I can easily pop in and out of it while I you know, navigate to other things on my phone. 
<laughs> now something else you have are better privacy features. So basically what it's gonna do is give you a breakdown of all the applications that are using specific permissions. So in order to see this, we're gonna jump into the settings and then we're gonna go into permission manager and we get this beautiful layout here that says, hey, 21 of 50 apps are being allowed access to my contacts. And these are a list of those applications. Now, if we wanna adjust those permissions, we're just gonna tap on the item and then we're gonna choose the access that we want it to have. Boom. Now this next tip is one that's came in clutch for me and it's the ability to see your notification history, which is great, especially in the event you might miss something or you might clear your notification history. So the first thing you're gonna do for this is head into your settings. It's a common theme here. And we're gonna go down to notifications. And then at the bottom, we have advanced settings. We're gonna tap on that. And then we're gonna move into notification history. And we're gonna turn this option on. But then you'll be able to see all of your notification history right here, even if you clear it out. Okay, now your camera app. There's a way that you can quickly zoom without having to touch your screen to do so, and that's to use your volume controls instead. But you gotta turn this option on as it's turned off by default. And in order to do that, you're gonna head into the settings of your camera app, and we're gonna go to shooting methods, and then press volume keys too. And then you can adjust what it's gonna do so you can make it zoom in or out. But by default, it is set as your shutter button to quickly capture a photo, but we can change that within here so that then when we head into the camera application and we press those buttons, it now functions as our zoom. And especially if you're the type that's capturing video a lot and you want to have a smooth transition of zooming in and out, that might be an easier way to do so. Now for those that may have ever found themselves in a scenario where you just need to temporarily mute your phone, you can do that by swiping down to your control panel and we're gonna press and hold the little sound icon here. And once it takes you into the menu for this, you're gonna see an option that says temporary mute. So if you toggle that on, you can select the duration of time that it's gonna mute your device for before it actually turns the sound back on. Now this is handy when you're in a meeting, you need to quickly silence your phone, but you don't wanna to forget to turn it back on. I would use this. Now, another tip that I think everyone can benefit from and not just Galaxy owners is the ability to use a VPN service, which brings me to the sponsor of today's video. So big thank you to Private Internet Access for teaming up with me again and not only sponsoring this segment of the video, but also supporting the channel. So if you're not familiar with a VPN service or Private Internet Access, basically what it's gonna allow you to do is browse the internet anonymously so that your IP address isn't exposed. And it does this by encrypting your Wi-Fi so you can browse securely and safely with no traffic logs. And I love that I can easily access the option to turn this on right from my home screen by just long pressing on private internet access and then choosing connect to Pia. And once you're in here, you even have the option to quick connect to different servers. But the thing that I really love about it is that it will work on up to 10 different devices at the same time. And me being a techie, I need that because I'm bouncing between all different types of devices. And it thankfully does work on all of them from my iOS device to my Android device to my Windows and my Mac computers. And a VPN service like this is definitely worth looking into, especially if you find yourself being hit with restrictions to access certain content based upon your location. You would then have access to that content as you'll be able to quickly connect to a different server to gain access. And that means that you can then unblock all content on different streaming services like Netflix, Hulu, and even Amazon Prime Video. But right now they're offering a deal where if you sign up for three years, you get two months for free at $2.08 a month. I'm gonna link it down below in the description box with the details and how you can get it. So for all of my people out there that have limited data, this next tip is one that you're gonna want to pay attention to. And that's the ability to better monitor your data usage. You can do that by simply heading into your settings and we're gonna search for mobile data. And we're gonna tap on the one under data usage that says mobile data. And then we're gonna to navigate to billing cycle and data warning. And once you're in here, you're gonna match this to when your billing cycle starts. And then you're gonna turn on set data warning and when you want to be warned about how much data you've consumed. So maybe if your plan is five gigs of data, you're gonna to wanna to probably set your data warning to like four gigs so that when it hits that cap, you get a notification that you're approaching that data limit. But you can also take it a step further and set an actual data limit so that when it does hit that number, it's gonna automatically turn your mobile data off. That way you don't accidentally go over. Now for those looking for a way to jump between your two most recently used applications, you can do that by double tapping your multitask switcher down here. And it's gonna to toggle between your two most recently used applications. Now let's talk about how you can pin your application window. This is super clutch if you got kids and you're handing them your phone or maybe you've got a friend that likes to be a little nosy. You can lock them into a specific application so they can't navigate anywhere else on your phone. So the first thing we gotta do is enable this and we're gonna go back into those settings. <laughs> and what we're gonna do is search for other security settings tap on it and then tap on it within the menu that comes up and we're gonna look for pin windows which is down here at the bottom so we're gonna turn that on so now when I'm in an application 
and I jump into my multitask switcher view, I can long press on the app icon up here and choose pin this app. Now you do want to note how to actually get out of the application and that's to touch and hold the recents and back button at the same time. So I'm gonna hit okay. So no matter what I press, it's not gonna navigate away from this application. Now, if you find that people start to catch on to what you've done and they figure out how to exit the application, you can take it a step further and add an extra layer of protection by requiring a certain password to be typed in in order to exit the app. So to access that portion, you're gonna tap on the pin windows option within your settings. And we're gonna come down here to ask for a pattern before unpinning. And once you turn this on, you can then set a pattern so that when you're in the app and you try to leave it, that pattern then has to be entered in order to exit the app. Another feature you might want to pay attention to is the ability to hide and unhide albums. So maybe you have an album within your gallery that you don't want to see all the time. You can just tap on the three dots in the top right and then hit hide or unhide albums and toggle on the albums in which you want to hide. That way you don't have to actually delete the album, but you can get rid of it from your view when you need to. Now, if you're currently not aware of how to do burst mode within your camera application, the way that you go about doing it is to press the shutter button and slide down. And as long as you're doing that, it's gonna capture a photo. Now you don't wanna press and hold cause it's gonna start recording. So just make sure you just tap and drag. Now a feature I find myself using a lot is the ability to snap a photo from a video. Now this is different than taking a screenshot as it's gonna take a higher quality photo. If I wanted to grab a picture from within here, I can just hit this icon here in the top left and it's gonna save a photo. Now this was super handy, especially in moments where you don't know if you wanna take a photo or a video, you don't have to choose anymore. You can just go ahead and grab that video and then go back later into the video and grab the photo that you want, especially at something like a concert, yeah. And when you're viewing the photo, if you swipe up and you press this little icon here, where's the hashtag or the plus symbol, you can add tags to your photo. So that then when you search within your photos and you type in, you know, that particular tag you made is going to find any photo in which you tag that word with. Another clutch feature is the ability to enable live captions for any media that's playing on your phone. So to access it, we're going to, you know, adjust our volume here and we're going to tap on those three dots so that it expands our view. And then we're going to choose this little icon here in the top left. And this is going to enable live captions. So what it does is detect speech on your device and automatically generate captions. And as you can see, now that my video is playing, my captions are visible. So I'm gonna head out to my home screen. Boom, it still shows me it even when the video is minimized. But that's gonna do it for this one, y'all. I'm gonna throw some other content up on screen right now that you can check out if you wanna binge watch some more videos. I do hope you stick around. And as always, thanks for taking the time out to let me tech you out.